for a world whirlwind tour of AP Physics 1, Work and Energy Multiple Choice Packet 1. Um, there will be, at the start of each question, I'll have a card up there with the problem number, and I'll leave it up there a little while, so that when people are scrolling through the, the video on YouTube, um, they can find the number that they're trying to do. But in order for people to see that, I have to leave it up there for a little bit. So this video probably you know, isn't going to be, you could, but it's not one that you're going to watch all the way through from beginning to end. Although, you might learn a lot if you did. But, but, number one. Tossing a ball straight up in the air, later returns to the point from which it was launched. If the ball is subject to air resistance as well as gravity, what, what are the following statements is correct? So before we go through our answers, let's take a look at this. So, it's here somewhere. There it is. So, let's look at it without air resistance on the left and with it on the right. So, the problem we're talking about is over here, but let's just recap what would happen if there was no air resistance. It would have initial velocity, would be the same in both cases, and it would have an initial mechanical energy that down here would be equal to just the kinetic energy. There would be no potential energy by a spring or gravity. Or gravity. Um, we'll say that's uh, the original kinetic energy. Same thing here. No, no different. Now, that's same in both cases. In this case, as it rises, its kinetic energy goes down, gravity pulls against it, slows it down, and the kinetic energy goes down, but it's traded straight away into potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So that up here, where it stops momentarily, if it stops, its kinetic energy is zero, so its mechanical energy at, say, the top is just equal to a certain amount of potential energy. But because there's no non-conservative forces, there's not friction or air resistance or anything like that, where nobody's pushing on it, then these two energies are the same. We would say mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final, and that's what, you know, no big deal. So we'll go to this height, have a certain potential energy at that point, mgh, h being this, and then it would fall back down and that potential energy would get turned back into kinetic. So they would be going the same speed, but downward when it gets to that point. All right. So over here, we, if there's air resistance, there's, that's a non-conservative force. It's a force that turns the energy into heat, basically. Um, what we can what we can't say is that the mechanical energy is just straight up and then initially is equal to the mechanical energy final we can't actually say that we have to say because the final is going to be something less in this case if something's pushing on it or whatever then that would be a non-conservative force as well then it, it could be more but in this case it's going to be less i'll even put plus um work done by a non-conservative force so nc there since work done by a non-conservative force. In this case, that's going to be negative work, I believe. So you could, if it helps you, we could even put plus minus, depending on whether the work is positive or negative. So, no things like friction or anybody pushing on it, no non-conservative forces, initial and final mechanical energy are the same. If there is something pushing on it, or, or air resistance or friction, then they're not the same. It's the final is plus whatever work was done is equal to the initial. So, air resistance is a form of friction. It can only remove energy. So, as it goes up, some of that mechanical energy that it had at the beginning is gone to heat. So there's no way it can make it to this height. Right? Some of that speed is going to be stripped away not by gravity, but by a place where you can't get it back through air resistance. So. It may only go to like here. Then it doesn't have as much potential energy at this height as it had over here. And on the way down, it can't pick up speed like it should because some of the energy that it had, some of this potential energy, which is already less than what it, the kinetic energy here, would have been, it gets taken away as it speeds up through air resistance. So 
this potential energy isn't even equal to the kinetic energy of the object when it comes back down. That kinetic energy is even less because you still lose you lose some on the way down due to air resistance. So you lose energy coming up and coming down. And the air resistance force is always going to oppose motion. So that force of air resistance, let's see. Um, I'm doing red. So on the way up, the air resistance force is down. And on the way down, the air resistance force is up because it always opposes motion. All right, so let's see. So it does negative work in both cases. So let's see what our answers are and see if there's anything we said will help us answer it. Um, let's see. The speed at which the ball returns... So which of the following statements is correct? The speed at which the ball returns to the point of launch is less than its speed when it was initially launched. Yeah, well, yeah. It says which of the following statements is correct. I would say that's correct. The time for the ball to fall is the same as the time for the ball to rise? No, I don't think you can say that because um, it's going to take longer, I believe, to come down. Because here it started off at a, at a velocity that it doesn't finish at. So it, its average velocity for this upward thing is this velocity, which is the biggest one it has so at the very start, and zero. Added, divide by two. The average velocity for this trip going down is the final velocity here, which we already know is less than the original, and zero. Average there is you get a smaller number. Slower average velocity means it took you more time to cover that distance. So no. The force of air resistance is directed down, both for, nope, nope, it's directed, always opposes motion. The network done by air resistance on the ball is zero. That's not true. It's going to be a negative number because it does negative work in both cases. And you add two negatives, you aren't going to get zero. The network done by gravity on the, on, uh, on the ball during its flight is greater than zero. Actually, the network by gravity is zero. It started at this height and came back to this height gravity pulled as it went from here to here gravity pulled down with a force over that distance and then and that's negative work on the way back gravity pulled down in a displacement from here to here same distance except the other direction positive work so it does um it is zero so the the, the gravity is zero in that case the network by gravity so yeah a was the right answer all right two You guys long enough? Right, have another couple seconds. All right. Block on a horizontal surface. Um, negligible friction is placed in contact with an ideal spring. Block is moved to the left, so the spring is compressed at distance x, and then released from rest. The block has a kinetic energy k1 when it separates from the spring. When the spring is compressed at distance of 2x, the block is released from rest. The kinetic energy of the block when it separates from the spring is. Okay, my friends. So, springs and energy. You should know that the potential energy in a compressed or stretched spring is one half the spring constant of the spring times the distance it's either compressed or stretched squared. And that's the distance from its equilibrium position. So, Okay, so really, and all of that energy, in this case, in both cases, gets turned into kinetic energy. So when they compress the spring, it'll have a certain spring energy. That would be the original mechanical energy. There's no friction, so that should equal the final mechanical energy, which in this case is just the kinetic energy when it launches. So this is at the start, the spring energy is at the start, at zero, and then afterwards that's kinetic energy. So really what we're asking is if you double the distance that you compress the spring what do you do to the energy that's a classic right squared be careful type of situ situation i wish they would do something more than doubling it. like what if they tripled it or whatever but anyway so but if you double it you don't double the energy that 2x gets squared so if this is the first case the other case would be 1 half, same k, 2x squared. And when you square that, you get 4. 
So you get u equals, well, let's do it this way, um, 4 times 1 half kx squared. So when you square this, this comes out as a 4. We're going to put it all the way to the left. And this is your original kinetic energy, sorry, your original spring energy, which is right here. So you have 4 times the energy. And we know that the kinetic energy after you let go, after it comes off the thing is going to be the same as that spring energy. So it'll be four times as much. And I would go with E there. You'll be sure to message me or contact me if one of the, I don't think I have the answers in front of me right now. If one of my answers turns out to actually be wrong, please let me know and uh, we'll, we'll correct it. We'll figure out what I did wrong. All right, number three. Person holds a book at rest a few feet above, above a table. Person lowers the book at a slow, constant speed and places it on the table. Which of the following accurately describes the change in the total mechanical energy of the Earth book system? Okay. Let's take a look at this one. So here you have your table. The book starts up here, we'll say. Now, if I just drop the book, it, the energy, the mechanical energy here, which is all in the form of potential, turns into kinetic, and the mechanical energy final is the same as the mechanical energy initial. Energy, the mechanical energy will be conserved. And just before it hit the table, it would be going fast. It, faster, it would have a speed. It would have a kinetic energy. The kinetic energy here would be equal to whatever potential energy was here. But we're not just dropping the book. We're lowering it at a constant speed and then placing it on the table. So when it gets to the level of the table, it, 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 it's not moving any at all. So that kinetic energy that it should have isn't there. But where did it go? I mean, we had, we had a mechanical energy here, right? And it would be whatever the potential energy is. Here, the mechanical energy is zero. So we, we, we lost all that energy. All right. So... Well, what happens is this, is because you're lowering it. So here we are in the process of lowering the book. And you're lowering it at constant velocity, which means the downward force by gravity, the weight of the book, is equal to your hand pushing up, say the normal force by your hand. Those two forces are equal. As it moves down, gravity is doing positive work. But what about you? You're doing negative work. You would be the non-conservative force in this case. You, the, the work done, so the mechanical energy initial would equal the mechanical energy final, plus or minus, depending, the work done by some non-conservative force, which in this case is you, not friction, not air resistance. What happens, by the way, is you, your, your muscles will get warmer. You would be transferring, yeah, transferring that energy or transforming it into the heat energy in your, in your muscles. So... Whatever the initial mechanical energy was, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, initial mechanical energy, which would be in the form of potential, is all going to go to work in your muscles. Because when you get to the end, it's not moving anymore. So let's take a look. They say, answer A says the total mechanical energy is unchanged. No, stop. No, 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 no. It should have kinetic energy at the end. The mechanical energy is, is definitely changed. It's, it had some, and then it had none. That would be a change. Um, so, no. The total mechanical energy is unchanged. No. I don't care what they say after that. The total mechanical energy decreases. I, I like that better. That C and D both say that. Because the person does positive work on the book, exerting a force that opposes the gravitational force. Okay, sure. okay. so here's where they're trying to catch you on this one. This one's not right. It's close. But you, you don't. The person does not do positive work. And so they want they want to get you on this one. Here's how they're trying to get you. They want you to think, oh, gravity's down, so it's negative, and I'm pushing up, and that's positive. No, 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 no. This isn't forces. This isn't vectors. Your 
force is negative work because the displacement of the book is downward. And so if the force and the displacement are in opposite directions, that's negative work. Gravity, they're in the same direction, it's positive work. So that, that's close, it's close, but no, 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 no. So it's got to be D. The total mechanical energy decreases, check. It went from having some to having nothing. Because the person does negative work on the book by exerting the force in the opposite direction movement. So bam. ball with a mass of 0.2 kilograms is dropped vertically from a height of 1.5 meters above the floor. Ball bounces off the floor and during the bounce 0.6 joules of energy is dissipated, turned to heat in other words. What is the maximum height after the ball? So, well, we release it. It has a certain potential energy. We actually can calculate that. So, right? So, we have um, in fact, this is really the same. Let's look at the equation real quick. So the mechanical energy initial should equal the mechanical energy final unless there's work done by some non-conservative force. Is there energy lost in this? Yes. All right, right there. And what that means is that as the ball hits the ground, it actually, if you have a picture, like a slow motion image of a, of a ball, it compresses the ball and then it re -expands. Well, in that compression, there's friction. So you lose some of the energy. So there is work done by some non-conservative force, the, the friction in the ball as it compresses while it's in contact with the ground. So we're not even talking about air resistance here. So they are not the same mechanical energies. Now, we're going to consider it here. It has, um, we can figure this out, 0.2, G we'll use is 10, and that's one point, and the, and the height is 1.5 initially. So it has an original mechanical energy of, um, let's say 0.2 times G, which we'll call 10 times 1.5 meters. Uh, let's see, that's two, that's three. Mechanical energy originally of three joules. Sweet. It's gonna bounce. When it comes back up, is it still gonna, is it, is it I will put it this way. It still has three joules from here. All It still has three joules total. Now, right here would be some gravitational and some kinetic. It still has, but after the bounce, it loses 0.6. So on the way back up, it only has 2.4 joules to work with. So it's not going to go as high. Because to get to that much gravitational potential energy, you don't need to go as high as you did before. It's going to go to some other height. So this is the key fact. The mechanical energy final has to be 2.4 joules because the initial was 3. They tell me that it's going to lose 0.6 joules. So the mechanical energy, that's it's going to lose that. So I better put a plus here, actually, because this will be less. If you add the, the, um, the amount you lost, you should have what you started with. So this would work, actually. Um, and so, subtract that from both sides, mechanical energy final is the 2.4 joules that I mentioned over here. So, all right, so that's the final mechanical energy. When it gets to the top here, right, when it comes back up and stops, that's in the form of gravitational potential. So I have 2.4 joules equals M, the mass of the ball is still 0.2 times g, which is 10, so we're just going to call that 2 right off the bat, times the new height. So the new energy that it has after it lost this 0.6 is equal to the potential energy it's going to have at the top of that bounce. Divide by 2, it's going to be 1.2 meters worth of height. Is that an answer? Let's see. Let's answer C. We'll go with it. All right. That was four. There it is. We are going to number 